Hi. Just Hi, adjusting, Ali. getting comfortable. <laughs> um, so today's topic, I think I would have let you run with because uh, this was on your mind. And uh, um, we're going to talk a little bit about constraints. So what, what got you thinking about this, Homer? Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> On I think we we all very familiar with the concept of constraints. You know, we experience all sorts of constraints, and um, it it is something I think is usually um, associated um, as something negative. So I almost think of constraints as um, not enough, too little. And I was, I was wondering about that. Um, is, it, is it always? We, we, we talk about and we hear about um, time constraints, fiscal constraints, uh, you know, uh, favorite, I think, politician's phrase. Um, and, and the moment that you hear something like that, you you associate that with, yeah, well, okay, cool. Whatever is going to follow is going to be negative. So if you look at the definition of the word, it actually, I think, means, you know, it's limited or not enough of. Yeah. I can't remember the exact definition of it. I actually looked it up to make sure oh, that... Yeah. Uh, I, I don't I don't misunderstand this. But then I was wondering, um, how do I deal with constraints? How do I uh, so so in, in, in my personal life and in my business life, how, how do I deal with constraints? Because are you ever going to be without any constraints? I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. And I'm sure you'll get to it, but probably wouldn't necessarily be good to not have any constraints. Yeah, so so that's exactly it. That's, that's kind of the conclusion that I came to. And th then I thought to myself, but I, I also create certain constraints for myself. Mm -hmm. For example, I don't allow myself to eat more than six donuts for breakfast. <laughs> That's a, that's a constraint that I, so, so, so in anything that you, um, so, so how closely is this related constraints, positive constraints, let's call them positive constraints. Yeah. How closely are they related to, um, to habits Yeah. that we try to create? Um, so. And, and I'm, I'm trying to reframe it for myself and to, to look at constraints as a positive thing, yeah. something that I can employ um, to add value as opposed to feel like they are taking value away. So maybe we call them guardrails. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad description. Yeah. Um, but guardrails, are they, do they actually stop you? Or are they just there to nudge you in the right direction? Funny you should say that. I'm busy reading nudge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was a, there was a nudge, point that I wanted um, to mention about. Uh, Soonstein. Thaler. 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 Okay. Thaler, Thaler. Okay. Um, that book that book has been out for for quite a few years. I think it's like 2010, 2009, 2010. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a pretty old book. I got it for Christmas soon after it okay. came out and I'm reading it for the first time now. <laughs> I read the first few chapters a few times, yeah. but now I'm actually getting through it. <laughs> but um Okay. Yeah, so guardrails are probably more of a nudge, uh, a suggestion. Yeah, so if if I try to to make that analogy, if I say, well, I I shouldn't buy more than 
two pairs of shoes this month, but I end up buying three. So, so that's a that's a guardrail that I yeah. set for myself so that I don't overspend. Yeah. But if I buy yeah. the third pair, it was on sale. It was it was the right color, <laughs> etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, yes. Then uh, not too bad. So in that sense, it's a guardrail. Yeah. Um, what a constraint so, be not having enough money to afford the third pair of shoes. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely a constraint. I mean, yeah. actually not having the money. Yeah. I think, you know, we, what, what, is, what is the first term that pop into your head when I mention constraints? I mean, if you think about constraints that you experience, what is the first thing that comes oh, to mind? Uh, time, money. Time. Yeah, time and money are probably the two biggest ones. Correct. Yeah. I think for most people, if you say, what constraints do you experience in your life? You will, you will hear those two. Yeah. I, I don't know what percentage, but I think very, very high percentage. Definitely. Beca because we, most of us feel like I don't have enough time. Yeah. And then, and then you try and put that in context and see, well, what don't you have enough time for? Yeah. Is that a... So, so you sound like you, you've got a very good... Uh, there was a no, very positive... Because, yep. because I'm thinking about all the books I want to read and I know I'm never going to read them all. Like, there isn't enough time for me to read every single book I want to read. Um why not? Have you have you done a, a calculation? <laughs> a calculation. Why, why, why are you so sure about that? <laughs> well, because there are millions of books and I want to read all of them. Because <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, like I said, when I started my reading journey is I'm not being restrictive on the types of books that I read. I'm reading murder mysteries and I'm reading business books and I'm reading self-help books and I'm reading all sorts of uh, biographies and um, and I'm interested in all of them for different reasons and in different ways. Um, mm. And every book I see, so now when I'm on Amazon, I'm obviously getting lots of book recommendations. I'm like, oh, that looks interesting. Yeah. Oh, that looks interesting. That looks interesting. Um, and so I'm putting constraints on myself not to buy all the books because I'm never going to read them all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's not necessarily a... So, so if we kind of look at that you said initially you said i don't have time to read all the books i want to yeah but then there's an unrealistic <laughs> kind of millions of books i want to read all of them yeah so that's probably not too practical so you can reframe that constraint into something um like we discussed before you yeah. put a positive constraint on yourself so i will read every day yeah. and I will read X pages or a chapters chapter day, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So that, that to me is a positive constraint that you put on yourself. Yeah. It's, I'm, but, I'm proud of myself that I've managed to not miss a day because uh, mm. very recently I was, I didn't feel like it. <laughs> um, when I went into London last week, I, I took my book with me. And I really didn't feel like reading it the one day, but I had told myself I'm reading a chapter a day every day. And so I did, I read it and kept up the habit, which is really good because now I'm back into it. But it uh, it was something that I had to force myself to do on that day. Yeah. So that's a positive, that's a, that's a positive constraint Yeah. in my framing of it. It's, it's keeping up your habit. Um, anyway, so... So we've got these common constraints that we're all familiar with, time and money. Mm -hmm. um, money, I suppose, is another one which um, we can, I mean, we can spend hours talking about financial constraints, you know. Yeah. Um, and we can, I'm sure we can pick that apart in terms of, well, is that justified? Are you just greedy or you just you know we shouldn't want all of these things and so on 
And I think that that is probably um, at some level a worthwhile exercise to do with oneself. See, what is your relationship with money? And, and when do we use the so-called constraint, the fact that we don't have enough, uh, when is it harming us? When is it helping us? Yeah. Um, but I just feel like it, and I, and I don't know exactly where the, the thought popped up for me about constraints, whether it was something that occurred in every video that I watched or every article that I read, but it just felt like, you know, what there are all these constraints around us. I think if you just pay a little bit of attention, you'll see that the, the environmentalists are talking about it, the politicians are talking about it, the economists are talking about it. Everybody's talking about these constraints. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's almost like um, it's, it's one of those words or when used in certain context to, to tell you to just be happy with what little you have mm -hmm. or to be miserable that you actually have enough to get by or something. I don't, I don't know if I'm, I'm articulating that well enough. But I think um, for me, what it has awakened me to the, to the concept idea that um, constraints are not not always negative they should be there um, just like a parent would put a constraint on i don't know how much sugar a child can consume or ice cream they Screen can eat time. although yeah you know all of those things yeah um the in the same way looking at myself and, and um my utilization of my resources, whatever they are, and putting positive constraints on that. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to reframe it and make constraints um, 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 not just a negative, um, not just a negative word or something that is um, associated with negativity, um, to frame it in a way that it has uh, some positive advantages for me. Do you have any tangible uh, examples that you can share, like an example of how you're doing it for yourself? Well, I think it's quite similar to your to your reading example. I, I put certain constraints on myself in terms of uh, how, um, you know, I, I can't I can't um, not stick to my exercise regime. So, 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 so that is a constraint I place on myself. Yeah. I I organize things around that. But I've also organized that for a long, long time so that it's early in the day and there's less chance of anything yeah. interfering with it because then it's easier to. And I think the same thing with your reading habit. You decide yeah. to do that. Thing, you yeah. know, do it first thing in the morning, yeah. get it out of the way. So this anything is my you problem can do now. after that. Because <laughs> now there's but other you're... things that I want to do, <laughs> like swimming, and now I can't do those in the morning because I've got to do my reading first. Now I've got to find the time to do my swimming or my walking or my gym, um, and those get a bit more difficult. Uh, those tend to be later on in the afternoon if it's not on a weekend. Um, yeah, so try to prioritize those things when it's not first thing in the morning every single day makes it a bit more difficult. <laughs> so don't you think that there's uh, an opportunity will present itself for you to maybe reorganize that? Yeah, move my so, reading. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so for example, in the summer months, I would assume that it is preferable to go swimming early in the morning. 
Although Whereas we in have, winter, we have the sunshine until nine o'clock at night now, so you can also go in the later <laughs> evening, which is quite correct. Nice. Correct, yeah. but yeah, you know. Whereas in winter, you you wouldn't go swimming at nine o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. um, so, I think by allowing once you have that confidence in terms of all these habits are there. If I don't read first thing in the morning, if I put another activity in that time slot, it's okay because the mm -hmm. habit is there and uh, I, yeah. I won't forget to read my chapter a day. So I think that that is fine to, to allow those kind of things, you know. But I'm also thinking about, um, I don't know, zooming out a little bit in terms of how I, how I view this thing about constraints and... Um, and how I apply uh, apply it to myself. We are positive constraints. Um, one of the one of the examples there would be to um, a constraint that I place on myself in terms of not growing a business beyond a particular point. Mm -hmm because of various, you know, reasons that may or may not be valid or applicable in three months' time or in six months' time or in a year's time. But contrary to uh, maybe popular convention or belief that, uh, you know, you've got to keep on growing, 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 you've got to chase, chase, chase. Yeah. Um, there are certain cases where it makes sense to me to not do that and, and specifically look at what opportunities to say no to. Mm -hmm. So so that's a, a slightly different than just my, my personal routine or things that I allow myself where, where I look at um, placing constraints on myself to not exceed that. And does that make sense in terms yeah. of uh, how I apply it or how I view it yeah um, anyway it was uh, it, it it's a nice exercise to go through for me I'm, I don't think I'm done with it yet yeah well, I think it ties in quite nicely with what we spoke about last time which is uh, the words that we use and, and change you know reframing some of the words that we use or trying have you have you used peeved by the way <laughs> I have I caught myself I, ca I caught myself um, using frustrated um, and I corrected myself for that and I also uh, found myself in a situation where somebody else used frustrated yeah. and I suggested to them maybe use peeved <laughs> so, so thanks for that so we're going to have everyone using peeved as their default frustrated yes. emotion the whole world is going to be peeved there's always yes. something to be peeved about there is more and more every day, <laughs> unfortunately. I'm sure we'll get to all of that in the next. <laughs> so yeah. is there, are there any parting words you have on constraints or, or any homework for myself or any of the listeners? <laughs> no, I'm, I, I know that um, we, we, we didn't really um, discuss this before the time and, and um, I kind of sprung this one on you so it'll just be interesting to um, once you've had a, a chance to digest this to get some feedback in terms of how you view constraints yeah well as I mentioned I mean the first thing I think about is that I'm constrained in terms of time and money and that's where my mind goes first so it will be interesting to look at it slightly differently and think about the positive constraints that we use or should use or can use daily should must take that weasel word out of my vocabulary yeah. <laughs> cool thank you very much Herman. until next time thanks Ali. cheers bye